Here is a three-day travel itinerary for Kyoto, the beautiful and traditional city of Japan that was once its capital. My name is Emily and join me for my Japan adventures. Subscribe if you like this content and make sure to like the video. Starting with the highlight, Fushimi Inari Shrine is a very beautiful and extremely crowded place. It is best to arrive here before 7.30am to get your perfect photographs. I myself got here at 6am. There's also a beautiful hike that's about 2 hours long, but it's well worth it to take a photograph of the map and experience elevated views as a reward. And here are the views. Stop 2 is Nemaru Palace, home to royalty in its time. It was extremely rainy on the day that I went, so make sure to bring an umbrella if the weather forecast says so. Stop 3 is a cafe that has matcha art and drinks, also traditional matcha desserts. It was a bucket list item for foodies, I would highly recommend it. Called Sasura Suan. After that, I just explored the city and did some shopping. For getting some ramen. Pro tip, if you have dietary requirements, make sure to use Google Translate to search for vegetarian food in Japanese characters. This will open up more options on Google Maps. On day two, I started off at the International Manga Museum where you can read manga from any decade for an unlimited time until closing. It's well worth the entry fee. I then went to the Golden Pavilion, which is perfect on a sunny day. It's a beautiful castle, but you can't go inside, it's just from the outside. I then headed back to the city to do some more shopping and found the Pokemon Center in Kyoto. Unfortunately for me, Pikachu was actually sold out. However, there was a lot of nice things to see and I got some souvenirs. Pro tip, leave some extra time because the lines do get very long at the Pokemon Center. I finally ended the day looking for a nice restaurant and came across a very rare find, a vegan restaurant that has actually had an amazing art experience. Vegan Ramu Zoo is actually really popular so make sure you make a reservation. I myself just waited in line about an hour before opening and got the first spot for cancellation. As I was just one person, it was pretty easy to get a spot, I just had to come back in 2 hours time so I was pretty hungry. But it was well worth it and really delicious. I think the art experience is what made it really unique. The rest of the day was quite relaxed, just walked back to the accommodation. Day 3 started off at the Temple with No Nails. It is a beautiful Buddhist temple that actually was built, as the namesake states, without any nails. It also has a lovely outdoor area to explore. Entry inside the temple actually has a fee, but outdoor is completely free. Truly remarkable. I then went to a classic manga shop where I bought a few souvenirs myself. It was amazing but just remember everything is in Japanese characters. I then went to the bamboo forest, stop number 3. It is as amazing as Instagram has described. I did notice that there were a lot of tourists actually renting traditional Japanese clothing to wear here and there are a few rides that you can get called rickshaw rides through the forest. It's a really great experience. One thing to note about Kyoto is that its mode of transport is known as cycling. If you get accommodation, it's best to get something that has a bike or to rent a bike in order to see the whole city. We stayed in a traditional Japanese house for accommodation and it was also well worth it. On our way out, we stopped at Kyoto station to get a bento box before heading on the bullet train to Hiroshima. Like this video if it was helpful and be sure to subscribe as I have more Japan travel tips and content coming your way. Thank you.